Hey, welcome back to Spirit Music Meetups. Mike Burris here, out into a park. Going to do this video a little bit different, give you kind of a, a view of this park that I kind of enjoy. See the nice covering here in the kind of a Ramada walkway. And now I'm going to switch views so you can kind of see. You're going to see the beautiful vines and trees they have here. See, just amazing, this vine is growing over the top of this tree, and it just goes over and over and over. So we're going to get in some sort of drumming here, but I want you to see how beautiful you can drum in different environments. Big, beautiful trees. I just had my little snack break, and, and see how these archways just go down, all the way down, way, way down there along the park. And what we have here is a railing because there's a bike path that you can go along. And there's a wash down there that actually runs with water when we get our rains. And there's our Mount Lemon view, and it's green, green mountains. If you zero in, you might be able to see that. But just a lot of rain we got last week and the week before. So now what we'll do and see how they all this these schools did all this artwork. And they have mosaics on the ground too of all you know things. Beautiful. So here's my little drum pad. I wanted to show you some neat stuff. And we can learn right here. So now let me change the view, and it's still recording. Isn't that neat? So what we'll do is just set that right there. Got your little practice pad. I love these off-world practice pads. And what we're doing is looking at a really neat book that I'm gleaning from. I did some gleaning in the last video. In the introduction from this book, I have like 200 of these books. Drumstick Control by Jeff Moore. And you can learn. Gleaning is like taking the uh, head off of a wheat stalk, throwing the, the rest of the grass away, or giving it to your cows as hay, or your other animals. But we can glean from others, and then... As for divine <laughs> guidance, you go, what is this all about? I was a Star Trek fan, Captain Kirk, Jean-Luc Picard. Kind of a funny pros and cons. I don't know if you can read it on this video. It's really funny, though. And so let's do some playing, taking some good ideas from others, and then ask for some divine revelation some divine revelation to see how you can go beyond them go go further I'm all about doing things progressively moving forward systematically step by step I'll use traditional grip doing something uh, very systematically progressively so it's not just jumping all over the place that you do this incrementally so that you're building um, coordination speed and form technique step by step by step building memories S layer upon layer so you build a good layer and then another layer and then another layer and you just keep building layers until finally you get to the top of the wall so you're not just jumping all over the place I think a lot of books just jump all over the place they never really ask for that divine guidance you know I really do a lot not that I'm this great chops master, but I have learned a lot about how to learn. <laughs> um, it takes a lot of time to become a chop master. I played in 37 plus bands, uh, taught 5,000 plus students personally, and not to mention, you know, online or whatever. So, one of the things he talks about is he calls them bucks. Let me get my glasses. Bucks. Bucks are, um, you know, really pumping. 
I call it just molar two. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two. So you're pumping. He calls them bucks. <laughs> I don't know why he calls them bucks. B-U-C-K-S. It's really this, the molar two. You're coming down. Let me see if I can do this sideways. You're coming down with your wrist and you're picking it up with your wrist. You can even drop your wrist like you're dropping it and then whipping it. Now you can use, see how I'm using my elbow? The elbow is going out, the wrist drops. This is the molar, molar two, molar two stroke. Now I'm not using any fingers or anything. I'm just tapping it and bring it up. Tap it, drop my wrist. So I'm not doing any work on the second stroke. It's just a wrist drop, whip. So it really teaches you about whipping. My fingers are just going along for the ride. They're just staying on the stick. Now you don't have to really kick your, your wrist, I'm um, sorry, your elbow out. You don't have to do that, you can to get more power, more power. It really whips, man. It'll break anything down there. Get your hand in the way you're done. <laughs> so after a while, it's just your wrist going up and down. Very little elbow motion. It's very loose. I barely have the stick in my hands. Now, a lot of people will realize, hey, you don't want to just take all that energy in, suck up all the energy. You can just let it bounce. Like, see, it wants to bounce a lot of times. Just let it bounce before it has a chance to bounce too many times. Just pick it up as it's, just pick it up. See, I'm barely holding the stick. Just pick it up before it has a chance to just pick it right there, right as it's starting to come down. So and that's what happens. You're letting it really bounce inside your hand. So really you're just doing this after a while and it's doing two bounce. It's just bouncing around in my hand. My hand is barely keeping it from coming out the fingers are keeping it from coming out of my hands. Donna, 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 Donna. It's like I'm flicking water off. I th who did Gary, um, Jim Chapin talks about flicking water off, or maybe axle grease. I think of it as water. I don't really work on cars and axles. I'm not doing any work, so find a way to not do any work. <laughs> You'll play a lot longer. So that's just bucks. And then make sure you can do, drop it. You can put a pause in there just so you can see it. It should just look like you're don't go, don't go, don't go. Bouncing a ball. So you can see my fingers, can't you? See, so he wants to bounce many times. Let it bounce. You're just helping it continue to bounce. All right, so I don't want to go so fast you can't see. I just hate that when they do these videos. You cannot see them because they're going so fast. And you can not you can slow it down a little bit on the YouTube. So that's just what bucks are, just learning how to do this, you know. And then they call these upbeat bucks instead of loud soft loud soft loud soft it's putting the accent on the second stroke and this is very good for 
evening out double stroke rolls. You want each stroke to be just as loud, right? So you compensate. You start soft and then loud, soft, loud. But you know, it looks the same after a while. <laughs> it looks the same. One and, but you're just counting different. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Right? So you might want to walk on the numbers so you can hear how one and walk, walk. So you're walking down here. One and two and three and four and 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 one and two and three and four one and two and three. That's strictly, you know, a double stroke roll, but inverting the second stroke. After a while, you can't tell what <laughs> the difference between bucks and upbeat bucks. <laughs> now, he calls these triple bucks. <laughs> one, two, three, one, two, three. This is a triple stroke. But it's really molar, molar technique. To create what's called molar threes. Now what I'm doing is adding a little of this to help help those little extra notes, those little see it bounces, and then I catch it and I catch it. See it bounces, and then I pick it up like a molar two. Sorry. I don't pick it up right there. I go da da. My fingers pulled that in. See, my fingers pulled that stick in. Bounce. My fingers pull it in. Then I do my up up stroke that you see in the molar two. That's the upstroke. But in the molar two, you you pull. You can pull the fingers in and up at the same time. Right, so you're pulling your fingers in and coming up all in one motion. So that's kind of a molar double stroke: loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. See, up, up is pulling your fingers in. Up, down, stay loose. Up, right. So a triple stroke, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can put a pause in there, but then eventually get rid of that. I'm barely holding it. I'm assisting the bounce. I'm not going bam, 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 bam. So I hope that helps you. See, bounce, pull fingers in, up. You can even just pull halfway and then finally half. So you kind of like half and then all the way. The second bounce, halfway, then all the way in for the third one. So you kind of have, it's kind of hard to do this slow because momentum All right? So they call that triple bucks and what do you think a quadruple buck buck is? It's just more. <laughs> it's a quadruple. 1 Two, so you could go one, right? That's the first bounce. You could pull that in, but then what do you got? You have no fingers left, so just there's a half or quarter, and then another, and then a, the last one is always up. I 
I'm counting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. But you know, you could do it all wrist. One and two and three and four and. You don't have to even use your molar technique. It's all wrist. And make your wrist work. You could do that with everything. But make sure it's down, soft, soft, soft. Down, soft, soft, up. Down, soft, soft, up. Down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up. Down, tap, tap, up. So at the very end, you got to up, down. You got a whip going on. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. So that's that inverted double. Second stroke loud. Two, one, two. So it's like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and so it's really hard to get back up. That's why I like the, the I like uh, the molar because it's more flowing. Hope that helps you. Now you know I think a, a lot of people talk about playing simultaneously, simultaneous playing, playing together, because if you can get your sticks to rebound exactly and, and your hands look the same way in a mirror. That's very good. If you can get your hands to look exactly the same and feel exactly the same. That's a simultaneous playing. Make your hands look exactly the same, looking at them, I'm looking at my hands, I'm looking at my grip, I'm trying to make sure they feel the same, the same little tiny motions of my fingers, to pull the stick a little bit towards my palm. These are not flams, it's not this. which creates a clack, 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 clack. It's together. They should feel the same. But you could do the same thing. Uh, he says both hands in unison. He calls these double stops bucks. So double stopping is a technique that's used in mallets. When you play two notes with on two notes, two mallets, or you can do quadruple stops, four mallets, but you're playing exactly the same height. I think this is very good for developing the same feel in your hands. The same bounce, no matter how loud it is. But now you can do the bucks. The buck stops here. One and two and three and see I'm pulling my fingers in, really doing trapping. Now I'm gonna do less pulling my fingers in, kind of just let it bounce. There's that molar, letting it bounce and just assisting slightly with the fingers. Now I'm going to use my whipping motion. It's kind of like an Indiana Jones whip. This is very good for developing your molar. Getting your wrists to create the same... You might go out further to see if your hands are creating the same whipping power stroke, I call it. And you can see in a mirror really well doing this. So I'm really trying to feel this. Is it in the same spot on the pad of my hands? Is it in the letter A? You gotta go further out. Is it in the letter A? Is my hands look the same? Or is there more space here, or less space? You know, it's got to be the same. I'm going to try to do no wing flying, just mostly all my wrists. Kind of a 
toned down molar. Now I'm going to bounce that ball. I feel my left. This is very good in getting your left up to speed, feeling exactly the same, fine-tuning all those muscles. So this playing together or in unison. Sometimes you see U unison. Sometimes you see T or T-O-G. Sometimes you don't see anything. You just see the notes on top of each other like a chord. Very noisy world we live in. It's going to get noisier, I'm afraid. So you can do that same thing with triple, right? So you can get your molar threes. Or if you don't want to use molar, just down, tap, up, 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 down, tap. See, they're exactly the same. Tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up, down, tap, up. I think this is really good in front of a mirror because you're training these little tiny muscles. Mind, body, awareness. You're trying to get them, your, your body to be in symmetry. This is symmetry. Straight line, both sides of the body look exactly the same. More importantly, they feel the same. And I'm looking at my hands, making sure they look the same. Don't go so fast you lose your form. You know, I was in martial arts from the time I was 13 to about 21. And katas, very lengthy um, series of movements. And each move had to be precise. You didn't learn these uh, 50 step, 100 step uh, katas that teach you about technique and form, you, you didn't learn them all at once. You, you take one step and you perfect that one step. And they, and they would have you perfect that movement, the martial arts movement, whatever it was, with your feet, your hands. Perfect. Then you would add the next step. So you just kept adding one step to the next step step by step until by the time you got done you had memorized all 50 or 100 steps and every part of it was perfect you know exactly where it's supposed to be not here not there exactly where it's supposed to be they came by and corrected you constantly so so this is the molar two so three one two three in eighth note triplet one D da, two D da, three D da, four D da. So you could actually draw lines, or I used to put tape across, but then tape is hard to get off your mirror. So then I started using bungee cords. I could put my bungee cord here and my bungee cord here where it needed, you know, down here. So I could see that's my, my tap, everything's level. I taught drum line. Everything's level, and then everything's up here. So I would put a bungee cord up here, bungee cord up here. Nothing in between. So now you can do the same thing with quadruple bucks. One and two and, or count sixteenths. One E and a, two E and a, three E and a, four E and a. See, I'm trying to get this to bounce. I don't really, you know, you can force it with your wrist, but that's very slow. I'm trying to get it to bounce. Oh, cut my leg. <laughs> this is kind of awkward the way I'm sitting. So I'm having to put my, my arms out. You should put your arms right by your side, but... I can't do that because my legs are in the way. So it probably doesn't look like this when you're standing up. Yeah, 
I see I'm hitting my legs if I don't, I can't make my legs go farther back. See, it's clack, clack. It's turning into, you know, looking into flan. This is how we get our left side up to speed. You know, can I tell you what that is? You're really tying the left arm over to the right arm. You're tying them together by playing them together. And they, they use a, it's, there's an old term used in the Bible. It's really used in agriculture. And uh, Jesus actually, you know, um, Yeshua in Hebrew, Jesus in Greek, J was just a German pronunciation. Jesus is uh, Spanish. He talks about yoking yourself to him. That's the way he trains. He says, if you want to learn from me, uh, take my yoke upon you. Now, he's talking to an agriculture society, and the way you train an amateur oxen to plow a straight line instead of all over the place, it's not an easy thing. You have to get an oxygen, oxen that is experienced. You can't whisper in their ear, hey, play, draw, you know, plow a straight line, you know, oxen, read this manual on how to play, you know, well, how do you do that? So you have to have an experienced oxen and you yoke them. That means you put a harness on that oxen to a, a young oxen and that young oxen wants to go all over the place, right? But because they're yoked to that experienced oxen, it that does the straight line, see the straight line behind me? It's yoked right next to each other, see? Boom, there's the other one, see the other one? And so they're gonna be straight together because they're yoked together. That harness makes them work together. And before long, you can take the harness off the young oxen and it will, it will do a straight line. So my lead hand is my strong hand, and it see, it's straight. It's plowing a straight line. It kind of wobbled there a little bit. That's because I'm not looking at what I'm doing. And I'm going to yoke this together, so I'm playing in unison. And after a while, if you do this, After a while, that guy is going to be just like your right hand. It's not right now. And if something happens inside our body, like there's a communication going on, it's inside your brain, inside your body, it's amazing. So do a lot of unison playing, not just... Do you into some playing? All right? So that's what that's all about. And we are on actually page, the first page of actual exercises, page eight. And I just wanted to glean off that. Maybe we'll find something on the other pages. And so he has what's called a buildup. And what he's doing is building the number of accents. So you start one and two and three and four and one and, and you can do this with the right, left, or both. I want to do it both. One and two and three and four and. So you're really just using tap strokes, keeping it going. And then you might do that one or two times and then the next one or two times add one more buck. One and two and three and four and. One and two and three and four. So we went from one. I'm just going to do one measure each. One and two and one and two and 
one and two and three and four, right? Then the next one would be one and two and three and four and one. So you might want to use a measure of coasting, which is nothing between. He, do, he doesn't do this, but I would. One and two and three and coast. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. One and two and three and four and one and two. See? So I used a measure of coasting. No accents at all. That's good to help think about what's coming next and to learn how to just maintain a tapping. Especially as you go faster. One and two and three. One and two and three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You could do one measure each or two measure each. One and two and two. One and two. One, two. One, two. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Back to one. One. So I think that's what he did. Let me see. Yeah, that's what he did. Two measures of each. And that kind of gives you a two bar phrase. And why don't you come up with your own ideas and add that to the bottom of this video. And that way we can learn from one another. See how we do this together? There's that word together again. So look forward to your ideas, and this will help each other. We're gleaning from each other now, taking the good stuff from each other. And uh, this is how the world should be working together. But a lot of people are just looking out for number one at the expense of everybody else. You know, put enough money in my bank account, and I'll say and do anything. Seems to be what's going on. <laughs> A lot of uh, compromising. Just put enough money in my bank account and rules for thee, but not for me. Bank account for me, but not for thee. And this goes on and on. A lot of self-centeredness. And they justify it. They, they come up with all kinds of reasons for why they're doing it. But in the end, it's just self-centeredness. It's not unity. It's not helping everybody work together. Not at all. It's divisiveness. And we should recognize it for what it is. So let's work together. Let's not just look out for number one. Let's work together and put that on the bottom of this, uh, in the comments or where, on the bottom of the page where you saw this video. It's on my website, very organized, much more organized on the website than you could do on any social media site. So uh, just use the website, you'll learn a lot faster, okay? And you're a lot freer to what you want to say. A um, lot. A lot freer. It's, uh, I'm not censoring anybody, and uh, I, I can't I can't guarantee what other people will do, but uh, just I will tell you: be kind to one another, and uh, you have no issues with me. All right. God bless you. Bye bye.